All right, everyone, we are back for another session. I don't know why I'm calling them sessions, but uh, <laughs> that's what I'll call them because I've been saying it the entire time. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so welcome back to New Year's Eve, Kenny Bunk. Thank you for celebrating with us here on Facebook and YouTube. Um, again, I'll remind everybody that if you have a question or uh, a comment or input or any sort of memory that you want to share with us, um, feel free to write it down in the comments on either one of those sites that I just mentioned. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, again, this is my sister, Catherine. She's um, tuning in from California and helping me uh, deliver the news from uh, the past uh, New Year's Eves here in Kennebunk. So Catherine is going to press the Google random number generator and we're gonna pick a year to read from. All right, let's see the first one, 1924. <laughs> nice, all right. Um, Roaring twenties. Who, huh? Roaring twenties. Oh yes, <laughs> Roaring twenties. Yeah, nineteen twenty-four. So I was laughing because for everyone who's been tuning in for the last few, know that I keep missing all the dates that Catherine reads out. But right. I won't this year. <laughs> um, <laughs> this time, I mean. Uh, all right, we're gonna do January fourth, nineteen twenty-four. Oh, I have to say, they rarely um, printed newspapers right on the day that we're looking for, but that's okay. Hmm. Guess it just happened to do, ooh, wow, this isn't a good one. So everyone's going to get to see what happens when um, hmm. the museum tries to digitize something Oops. and uh, it doesn't work so well. Oh. <laughs> Whether due to the, uh, the age of the paper or the just mm -hmm. kind of the um, quality of it when we go to scan it the first case. Huh. So this is the Kenny Bunk star, which again is kind of similar to the Eastern star. It was also a predecessor to the York County Coast star. Um, so let's take a look. It says Friday, January 4th, 1924. Um, the biggest thing that drew my eye, I'll say, oh, there's a wedding in Wells oh. over here. That's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, Gladys Mildred Hill was united in marriage to Earl Morse. Also, they were both of Wells. So that's kind of fun. The Morses, I think, are still a family mm -hmm. in Wells, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we, we have a uh, advertisement over here for McGee One Pipe Furnace, comfort in every oh. room. Wow. <laughs> so it's being sold at two different uh, companies, at the Larrabee's in Kennebunk and AM Wells in Kennebunkport. So that's kind of... Kind of fun. So I'll scroll. Uh, ooh, they've got York Utilities Company is upping their rates. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, oh, great. They go right into the like the local history. Again, sorry for the bad quality of this, um, mm -hmm. this newspaper, but we'll explore it anyway. It's not going to hamper us. Um, looks like once again, they are having uh, sales around. This one's in Biddeford. Um, Let's see, in Ogunquit, the Baptist Ladies Sewing Circle yes. uh, met on Tuesday with Mrs. Frank uh, Randall, I think that says. Um, oh, <laughs> it was made to have somewhat the nature of a New Year's party and mm -hmm. delicious refreshments of pineapple, sherbet, <laughs> and assorted cake were served. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, someone is home um, from Bates College. Um, there's a lot of mentions of college here. Uh, okay. Yeah. Give a very interesting talk on his work among the Indian children at, um, Bacon College in Oklahoma. Oh, wow. Interesting. So one of the things I always wonder when you read, uh, things like that is what caused that gentleman to leave Kenny Bunk or, um, Ogunquit as it were, to go all the way out to Oklahoma to yeah. school. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> how long it must have taken to get there <laughs> yes right exactly that's right oh mcgee ranges once again they apparently were the big um <laughs> seller of heating appliances yeah uh, american legion is mentioned in here um and then i'll just we can end with this one i suppose uh for 1924 but it's because we're all thinking of it uh this year as well <laughs> stop that cough with granny's flaxseed rock candy and licorice Oh. Large bottle, 50 cents, 
at Fisk's Drugstore, which is down was down here on Main Street um, in the, the brick building that now has Christians and uh, formerly Perfectos, things like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, let me just interrupt uh, you. I'm sorry. So the, one of the fun things is Acme Theater, which was on Main Street in Kennebunk. This is their movies that they were showing in oh. 1924 this week. Um, I don't know if we'll know any of these but maybe other folks will so they're huh. showing um rags to riches um buddy at the bat fools of fortune firefighters uh the first degree the steel and the steel trail and then this one saturday they're going to oh. announce the feature later on but they also <laughs> have international news <laughs> so before we all got it on our televisions yeah they're just the newsreel at the beginning yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, what's our next year? Our next year is 1864. Okay, let's see how I can get. Okay. I had to make uh, two pictures of 1864 because it was going from one page to another. All right. So first page, we're going back to Andrew Walker now. Um, again, he was a town diarist who wrote pretty much every day what was going on. Uh, the closest to the turn of the year for 1864 was January 6th. And he writes, of course, we have to suspect that this is going to be talking about the Civil War. Mm -hmm. He writes, it was noted December 22nd that 24 volunteers on that day went to Augusta to be examined as soldiers for the 2nd mm -hmm. Maine Cavalry Regiment. Of that number, five were rejected and eight were credited to the quota of other towns as they could not legally prove they were residents of Kennebunk, as is reported. The 11 who were accepted as residents of this town, um, were, sorry, yeah, um, mustered into the U.S. service December 24th are as follows. And this is where I need to bring up the next picture. There we go. All right, so these are the folks that were mustered into U.S. service in 1864 at the turn of the year, James Moody. Um, so as you look down, this is when where they were signed, what regiment they went to. So a lot of them went to the 27th Regiment, which for those who have been watching all of these um, clips, you'll remember uh, James Stone, one of the first gentlemen that we read about, uh, he was um, the captain of said company because most of the men in the 27th Maine uh, came from Kennebunk and Wells and uh, towns near here. So, um, okay, Adam McCulloch, George Oaks, George Wakefield, John Hanscom, Horace Taylor, Joseph Kimball, William Cleves, George Cook, Albra Garland, that's a hard word to say, mm -hmm. uh, Freeman Cobb, um, all mustered into the service. It says W.A. Moody being an officer is not recorded as one of the quota and does not receive any bounty. The above men now belong to Company L. Part of them are now in town to receive their bounty of $300 each. So um, in case anybody's wondering what a bounty is, mm -hmm. um, it means uh, if they basically if they volunteered um, to so the, the state would put out a call or the country, the federal government would put out a call um, for a quota of people from each town um, to sign up for the service. And if they could get that by having people volunteer instead of getting drafted, then they would pay somebody a bounty because they didn't have to force people to sign up. So all of these gentlemen on this list um, evidently volunteered to go and then they get paid their $300 uh, cash <laughs> to go. Oh. So that's what that is. <laughs> uh, all right, let's do, um, I think, one last date for this session. And I'm going to apologize because I can hear the sirens are coming out. So we're going <laughs> to, we are lucky enough to be neighbors to the police and fire departments. So sometimes yeah. that's an occasional siren <laughs> go by. <laughs> that's all right. I hope everybody's okay, by the way. Yes, of course. All right, last year. All right, the last year, let's see, is, oh gosh, it's really a fan of the 1800s. We'll go with 1917. Okay, nice. Let's see if I have something to go with it. Oh, wow. 
Okay, so we have, uh, I'm gonna show you what I'm looking at here. So we have the Eastern star um, once again, and I'll say uh, volunteers and staff members here at the museum often try to go through the, the digitized newspapers and we'll make a note of kind of a, something that was big uh, theme in that newspaper if we find it. So for this one, someone's obviously been going through and been doing that. So that's why you see those extra words hanging on. So uh, let's find something around New Year's. So we have December uh, 28th or we have January 5th. And that's not, uh, that's not an actual newspaper. So we're gonna go with December 28th. <laughs> Uh, let's see if I open it correctly. December 28th, 1917. Oh, so this will interest actually a lot of people. Um, this is not something obviously that was happening in 1917, but they, <laughs> um, this is a explain. whole, yeah, right. They felt the need to explain uh, the reasons for naming uh, of Kenny Bunk streets. So if anybody's ever interested in, you know, why streets are named the way they are, some of them you can figure out. Uh, I mean, this is pretty straightforward. Lincoln Street for the martyred president. Um, <laughs> um, Ross Street, uh, which I think is now Ross Road uh, near Hanford, um, in honor of Dr. Oren Ross, leading physician of Kenny Bunk for a great many years and father of Dr. Frank Ross. Um, so actually, I won't go through all of these, but if anyone's ever interested in the street histories, you know to come look for the newspaper from December 28th, 1917. <laughs> um, one thing that's interesting here is one of the biggest stories, again, remember we were talking about how like page one of any newspaper is the biggest and most dramatic mm -hmm. things that have been happening. So this whole column is about um, people who have left for Christmas or people who are visiting for Christmas. Uh, and if you, I'm sure to people's horror in 2020, um, the list of away for Christmas are all of these people, um, you know, and for those of us <laughs> who would be afraid at that, because why would you publish the fact that you're away from your house uh, right. uh, <laughs> for any ne'er-do-well, um, <laughs> just an interesting thing to see in a newspaper. So yep. all of those folks were wow. traveled Elsewhere, it looks like they just actually went to either Springvale or Lawrence, Massachusetts, Kittery, so pretty local, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but just the same. Um, I think we all wonder that, <laughs> why you would do that. <laughs> wow. um, Kenny Monk Savings Bank had a Christmas club, um, to, I think to save for, um, save money for the holidays, mm -hmm. for the next holiday. Um, this one, Norton and Harden uh, in Kenny Bunk, Maine, is advertising electricity for every farm. Wow. And then, oops, sorry, um, government demands stock taking and returning account of stock on hand December 31st. So wow. trying to get rid of the extra funds there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, perfection of heaters. So that's a concern. Still have. Yep. And then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't know if anyone else is noticing this, but there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of mention of trade and keeping faith in trade and investing or getting rid of things. Mm -hmm. um, so that was 1917, uh, I guess was kind of wartime. So everybody's a little yeah. uh, nervous about what was uh, going on. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm going to scroll all the way down. Kenny Bunk in vicinity. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> It says the star has received two handsome 1918 calendars, oh. one from J.O. Uh, Ewell, the florist, and one from W.F. Bryant, Bryan, sorry, painter and decorator. That was big news. <laughs> <laughs> um, 75 were present at the surgical dressings meeting Wednesday afternoon. Um, oh, it, okay. So it was containing, I can't read the number but something dressings was packed for shipment to Boston. And I'm pretty sure that that had to do with the war effort that was going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. So a lot of these actually, if, if you guys are perusing the same as me and my sister, um, you can see that a lot of these actually have to do with um, uh, kind of medical um, service or um, war effort items, patriotic league, 
uh, mm -hmm. Christmas party. Um, people go to the exemption board having enlisted and been commissioned. So um, a yeah. lot of this has to do with um, World War I at the time. So that's what mm -hmm. was going on in Kennebunk were people talking about World War I and what was going on with uh, society. So again, with fundraisers and um, trade and investments and all the rest. So it seems once again, uh, the theme is, you know, um, everything happens again and again, mm -hmm. <laughs> just in different, just in different ways. Um, all right, let's just do one last one and then we will sure. hand it off to the next New Year's Eve event. All right. So let's see. We We've just done that one. Let's see, <laughs> uh, 1857. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna go to Andrew Walker to close this one out. Mm -hmm. He has a little bit of uh, comedy, but a little bit of sadness <laughs> as well. So December 31st, uh, did, oh, what year did you just say to me? 1857. Okay. Okay, so this is December 31st, 1830, or 56, sorry. <laughs> Getting yeah. confused with the numbers. Anyway, <laughs> so it is leap year in Kennebunk. The ladies in Kennebunk do not appear to have taken advantage of their leap year privilege. I don't know what that means. Um, huh. Or they have found marriageable men uncommonly obstinate. Oh. <laughs> there has been a less number of marriages in Kennebunk during the past year than in either of the last 18 years. Wow. Wow. So 19 couples married in 1856, evidently. The number of deaths in Kennebunk, as recorded in the town clerk's office for the year 1856, 17 males, 21 females, total 38. Average age was 40 years. A proportion to the population, one in 70. Wow. Wow. So that really puts us uh, kind of in our place about what was happening in 2020 compared to 1856 mm -hmm. um, in terms of population and uh, some reference to a leap year. Um, and I don't know what the <laughs> privilege with being married in, in a leap year is. If somebody knows what that yeah, superstition is, um, maybe uh, <laughs> you can fill us in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think we will uh, let everyone enjoy their evening and make sure to head back here um, to see the rest of our New Year's Eve uh, festivities here on Facebook or on YouTube. Um, and once again, I will uh, wave with my sister and say thank you very much for tuning in, everyone. We'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs>